In this video, we're going to take a look at a legal problem called best time to buy and sell stock. So say you have an array prices for um, i element is the price of the given stock on day i. Design an algorithm to find the, find, to find the maximum profit that uh, you might complete as many transactions possible. Um, and sorry, as, as you like. And then buy one and sell one share of the stock multiple times. We still have the same rule as best time to buy and sell stock uh, one. And then you might not engage in multiple transactions at the same time. So you must sell the stock before you buy, buy one again. So it's the same rule as the, the first one. But what we're trying to do is we can be able to have multiple, um, like we can be able to buy stock in multiple times to get the max profit. So in this case, we have an array. And then in this case, we're, we can buy from one to five. So, so buy from one and sell at five. And then we're gonna buy at three and sell at six. Um, so we can see that our profit is gonna be seven. So five minus one is gonna be four. Six minus three is gonna be three. So four minus three is gonna be seven. And we also have another example where we have one, two, three, four, five. You can be able to, um, do it two ways. So one way you can do is you can like buy at here. Uh, where is, yeah, so buy at here and then sell it here. So you get, make one profit. So uh, so you make one, so you make the profit is one and then you buy it here and then sell it here as two. Buy it here and sell it here as three. You buy it here and sell it here as four. Or what you can do is you start it here and then you sell it at five. So either way works. Um, but the max profit in this case is four, right? And then here we have another example where we have a declining array. So basically in this case, we have no profit at all. So let's talk about how we can solve this problem. To solve this problem, I think it, in my opinion, it's pretty easy. It's very, very similar to the best time to buy and sell stock one. We're going to implement the same thing how we did on the best time to, to buy and sell stock one on the second one as well. So in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to start um, at basically how we're going to compare is that every time when we uh, find a max profit, when we find a profit that is bigger than zero, then what's going to happen is we can immediately just add that to our profit. So we're going to have a, a, a variable called total and then we can kind of use the same approach that we use in buy, best time to buy and sell stock one. We're gonna have our minimum variable, which basically keep track of the minimum value that we're going to buy from, uh, where, where, where we wanna, when we wanna buy. And then in this case, we're going to get the minimum value to start at seven. And then we can start at index one, just like how I did in the best time to buy sell uh, buy and sell stock one. And then in this case, we're going to basically try to see if um, if the current position minus the minimal value has a value that is bigger than zero. If it's bigger than zero, we're going to add it to our total. And then what's going to happen is we're going to continue to do that until we get our profit, until we get our total, uh, sorry, iterate the entire array. Uh, to get our total and return a total about, uh, variable. In this case, uh, we're going to move forward because um, one minus seven is not bigger than zero. And then what's gonna happen is we're gonna see if this value right here is actually um, bigger than minimal value. So in this case, one is small, sorry, one is smaller than uh, seven. So in this case, the new minimal value is gonna be one. And then we're gonna move forward. We're gonna see if five minus the current minimum value is bigger than zero. In this case, it is five minus one is four. So total is now four. And then we're going to um, see if this value right here is less than the current middle value, which is not. So we're going to move forward. We're going to see if after we um, like finish and then uh, get our basically added to our total for the profit, what we're also going to do is also have to reset our minimal value, okay? Because we cannot use this anymore. We cannot use anything that's past this anymore, okay? Because we, well, we, once we sell it, we have to like buy again. So 
by a different stock. So what's going to happen is that we're going to make our middle value equal to our current value. So it's kind of like resetting. We got to restart again. So we're going to move to the next element. We're going to see if this value right here minus the current minimum value is bigger than zero. In this case, it's not. So we're going to increment by one. Uh, and then we're going to see if this value right here. Wait, hold on. My bad. Um, we're going to see if this value right here is actually the new minimum value. In this case, it is. We're going to set three as our middle value. And we're going to move forward. You can see if this value right here minus our middle value is bigger than zero, which, it, which in this case it is. So we're going to minus six, uh, we're going to uh, get uh, the profit, which is six minus three, which is three. Three plus four, which is equal to seven. And then we're going to see if this, uh, we're going to reset. We're going to get our middle value equal to the current position's value, which is six. And then we're going to move forward. We're going to see if this value right here minus the middle value is um, is bigger than zero. In this case, it's not. So uh, what's going to happen is we're going to basically pass. And then after we iterate the array, we just return the total, which in this case is seven. So it's very, very similar to the first one, which is going to try to implement this in code. Our first step is to get our length, which is prices.length. I believe this question still doesn't, okay, so it does have a constraint. Okay, so the constraint is that the length is, uh, is, uh, less, is, is uh, bigger than or equal to what? So in this case, what we can do is we can say, if n is less than two, we can still just return zero because we need a buy point and we need a sell point. And then what's going to happen is we're going to have our total, which start at zero. Min is going to start at the first element of the array. So we're going to iterate the entire array starting from index one. And then we're going to fix this part right here. So then what we're going to do is we're going to get our profit at the current position. So the profit is going to equal to prices at i, so the current element minus the minimum value. And then we're going to check to see if profit is actually bigger than zero. If it's bigger than zero, then we're going to uh, add profit to our total. So total is equal to total plus profit. And then we're going to get our minimum value is going to equal to our current element right here. So pro prices at i. Otherwise, we're going to get min is equal to uh, the minimum value between min or prices at i. Okay. So basically, once we've done that, we can just go into return. Uh, total. So let's try to run the code. Okay, so basically, in summary, we're trying to do this, trying to get our profit. If our profit is bigger than zero, we're going to add it to our total. And then we're also going to make our minimum value equal to the prices, so the current element of the, the array, so that we can reset and then start over just like how we just like how we start at the beginning we basically get our middle value is equal to the first element of the array in this case we're going to get our va a middle value equal to the current element of the array and then do that so let's try to submit and you can see we have our success so let's try to think about some time complexity for this one and again the time complexity is linear and the space complexity is constant because we ha only have two variables here now there's another solution, and if you look at this, basically um, every time when we find a element that is bigger than the previous element, we can just get a profit. And we once we get a profit, which is one in this case, we're going to add it to our, in this case, our total, and then uh, our total, right? So once we add it to our total, um, we can continue to do that. 
if the previous element is bigger than the if the current element is bigger than the previous element, then we're gonna add it at one to the total or add it, add the difference, get the difference and add it to our total. So if we were to change this to the solution that I just talked about, what we can do instead is we can just ignore we can we don't have we don't need the minimum variable. We can just start at again we can start at index one. We're gonna get our profits, so profit is equal to prices at i minus prices at i minus one. We're gonna see if profit is actually bigger than zero. If it's bigger than zero, then we're going to add profit to our total. Okay. Once we add the profit to our total, we're going to continue to do that until we get our uh, total. So if we were to run the code and we still have um, success. So you can see this is how we improve the solution 100% um, faster. So you can do it this way or you can do the other way. But the time complexity, again, is going to be linear. We just um, remove a couple variables and then try to make the process a little shorter. And that's it.